Here we have a couple more examples of fully solving our right triangles. So we'll jump right into it. So we've got ourselves a right triangle like so. Um, let's go ahead and label it A, B, and C. They give us that C here is a right angle. They give us down here 11.7 and in here a 32 degrees. So remember, the way I like to set these up is by organizing a table of all the angles and all the sides because we need to find everything. All three sides, all three angles. So we have angle A, angle B, and angle C. We also have side AB, side BC, and side CA. Some of these things we're given, some of them we need to find. So let's start with what we're given. Uh, well, just starting, I see the 11.7. That's a side length, and that's for side CA. So 11.7 goes right here. Um, 32 degrees, that is angle A. And then we have C, which is 90 degrees. So for this one, I have two angles missing one of them, so we can use our 180 rule. 32 and 90 add up to, let's see, so using our calculator, 90 plus 32 gives me 122 degrees. And then if I subtract that from 180, because that's what a whole triangle adds up to, I can find out the missing angle. So 180 minus 122 should give me 58 degrees. So angle B, 58 degrees. Now for the next step, well, there's usually three things we need to find. The first one, pretty easy. Second one, you always have to use trig. Okay, you know, you only have to use trig once. So it really doesn't matter whether we're finding AB or BC next. I usually go in order. So let's find AB. AB, let's mark it off on the picture. AB is this side. And if you want to get ahead of yourself, AB, looking at that side, is the longest side. It's across from the 90. It's the hypotenuse. And I don't know what it is yet, so I'll call it X. Now, based off of that, so we have the hypotenuse X. The only angle that I have marked on here is the 32. So according to that 32, the X, the missing side, is the hypotenuse. And the only other side that we have labeled is the 11.7. And according to that 32, that 11.7 is the adjacent side. So if we're looking at our trig functions of SOCATOA, I've got the hypotenuse H and the adjacent A. So H and A goes with cosine. So the cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. And now let's fill it in. Remember, theta is just the letter. And in this case, theta is the angle, which is 32 degrees, equals the adjacent, 11.7, over the hypotenuse x. And we want to find out what x is, what the missing answer is. Now, when x is on the bottom, we know the shortcut is that we can switch x and this whole term and continue our problem. So x equals 11.7 over cosine of 32 degrees. And now this is all just calculator work. 11.7 still on the top. The cosine of 32. So cosine 32 degrees, 0.848. I usually go with three numbers here just to leave a little bit of room. And then later on you can reduce it down to however many that they're asking for, whether it's the tenths or the hundredths. And that will take 11.7 and divide it by 0.848. And we get something in the neighborhood of 13 point. And so I've got a 797. And if we're rounding it to one decimal place, let's call that 13.8. All right. So 13.8 was the missing side that we were finding right here, AB. So 13.8. Now, if I wanted to, I could use trig again to find out what BC is. I'll have to change some of the names of my sides. But the other thing that we know is that if I know two sides of a right triangle, I can find out the third using Pythagorean's theorem. And remember, Pythagorean's theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So I'm just using all the methods that we've learned so far. 
A and B doesn't really matter, but C is always the hypotenuse. And we do know the hypotenuse. Well, we had it as X before, but we found it to be that 13.8 number. So that's my hypotenuse. So 13.8 is the hypotenuse. A and B don't really matter. One of them we have to find. I'll find A this time. And B, the other side that we know, was the 11.7. And square it. So A squared plus... And now we're using our calculator, 11.7 squared is 136.89, and 13.8 squared, 190.44, we'll go ahead and subtract that 136 number to the other side. Those cancel, so A squared equals... So, minus 136.89, 5355. And then finally, to get A by itself, square root. So A is, let's take the square root of that number, 7.3 when you round it. Now, sometimes the letter says A, sometimes the letter say X, but just remember the thing that you're finding, and in this case right now is BC, so side BC is 7.3. Now you can leave it in the table and that's fine if you want to write it back on the triangle to see if they make sense. 11.7, 13.8, 7.3, these are all in the same neighborhood so everything looks okay. All right, one more example. Again, another right triangle. A, B, C, always give us that 90 degree angle, 16 and 6. So again, same kind of setup for the table. I need to find three sides and three angles. Angle A, angle B, angle C, side AB, side BC. Side CA. We're always given three things and we need to find three things. The three things that we're given are the 6, the 16, and the 90. So 16 is AB. The 6 is AC or CA. And then the 90 degree angle again is the C. This time I have two sides and one angle, so I want to go ahead and find that missing side first. And then just kind of talk yourself through it. I have two sides of a right triangle. I'm missing one. That's, remember, your Pythagorean theorem. So we fill it in. I don't know this side just yet. C is the most important side. That's the hypotenuse, in this case, 16. We'll call 6A and B really doesn't matter. That's what we're trying to find. 6 squared is 36. B squared is B squared, and then 16 squared. So 16 times 16 gives me 256. We subtract the 36 over. We get 220. And then finally square root both sides. The square root of 220 gives us 14.8. All right, it is labeled as B, but we were finding B, C, so we can put that in there. Oops. Just go for it. So, 14.8. Eh, I can do better than that. There we go. 14.8. All right, and once you get to this side, it doesn't matter which one you find first. I usually start in order, so let's find angle A. And the second step is always using trig. So let's mark off angle A. In the picture, angle A is this one up here. And we're given two sides. We have the 16 and the 6. According to this angle A, which is now going to be our theta that we're trying to find, the 16 is the hypotenuse, and the 6 is the adjacent. So just like last time, A and H go with cosine. Adjacent and hypotenuse go with cosine. So cosine of theta is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. 
So cosine theta, I don't know what theta is, so that's what I'm solving for. The adjacent is 6. The hypotenuse is 16. All right. So just looking at this, 6 over 16 we'll take to a calculator. We get 0.375 cosine theta. And remember, theta is my letter. I want to get theta by itself, so I need to move this cosine part. But moving cosine to the other side, remember, makes it the opposite or the inverse, so cosine inverse of 0.375. So now I have to use that special button on the calculator, the cosine inverse. So you either hit second or you hit uh, shift, whatever gets you there. So cosine inverse, it's right above cosine. So the cosine inverse, I'm going to do it on my calculator, 0.375 is 67. Point, and then I see a 97. Okay, so I usually like to round that up. So that's going to come out to a 68.0 degrees because remember, this is an angle. So I'll take that back into the box up here. Angle A, we found out, whoops, not 6.8, 68.0 degrees. I could use trig again to find angle B, or I know that if I have two angles of a triangle, I can find the third one by using the 180 rule. So right now I have the 90 and the 68. So adding those together gives me 158. And then subtracting that number from 180, so 180 minus 158, we come out to 22 degrees left. So the missing angle here, 22 degrees. And there we have all our angles filled in, we have all our sides filled in, we have solved the entire triangle.